computer animation developed to help engineers and scientists visualize interactions in space has fascinated artists for years. Up to now, computers hadn't been used to help make the sort of cartoons you see when you go to the pictures. The sort of cartoons they turn out at Bob Godfrey's studio in London. Here they're preparing titles for a new feature film called The Magnificent Seven Deadly Sins. It's a sequence that involves aircraft of the 1918 era. The animators will have to draw at least 24 different pictures for every second the cartoon lasts on the screen. Each picture will be slightly different so that on the screen, you get the illusion of movement. Well, the journeys are the last of the uh, plane oh, drawings. This is the last one here, yeah. so I'll start them straight okay. away. Right. After the initial drawings have been traced out, everyone is colored by hand. It's taken a team of five, two weeks to get to this stage. Now all the 500 drawings for the completed sequence go to the rostrum camera to be photographed. Every single frame of film may be composed of several different pictures, each of which may be moving separately from the other parts. Only when the film has been printed will the animator get a really clear idea of how well his cartoon has worked. Just one mistake at any stage and the whole scene may have to be filmed again. A complicated chart details the order the pictures are to be filmed in and the movements of the camera. The chart shows how to match the pictures to the sound effects and any voice and music effects, all of which will have been pre-recorded. On top of all this, optical effects and film experiments have to be synchronized in each movement. The finished sequence, to which we have added our own sound effects, has taken 21 days to produce, has cost hundreds of pounds, and lasts only 17 seconds. A plane drawn this time by computer. It still has the slightly cold technical quality computer pictures have always had up to now, but it does show how effectively a computer can animate. In an artist studio in London lives a man who has worked on many cartoon films. In a corner of his studio, Stan Hayward is working to realize his idea that one day computers can be used to help make cartoons that retain the personal touch. At a computer terminal, he works out complicated camera movements in seconds that would normally take hours. One day, he believes, artists could sit at terminals miles apart, even in different countries, and work together on computer cartoons. And the script, the drawings, even the music for a complete film would all be coded on punch tape. Meanwhile, an Atlas laboratory computer that is normally used to make technical films has been pressed into service to make its first cartoon intended purely for entertainment. A special device enables an image drawn by hand to be traced out and fed into the computer, which will do the animation itself. The computer can take two drawings and work out the movements needed in between. And the animator will know almost at once how his ideas are shaping up. Once the drawings are fed into the computer, it can speed them up, slow them, enlarge them, or turn them upside down. A dog on a motorbike chasing a cat, but computerized for the first time. The cat and dog animation itself can be coded by the computer and stored on punch tape. And the punch tape is transferred to magnetic tape, which in turn provides the signals which will operate a film camera. The cartoon is recreated onto the face of a cathode ray tube placed directly below the camera. The computer cartoon hasn't the polish of hand-drawn work, no colour or background has been filled in, but the timings of the movements are right. The computer images are also printed out on photosensitive paper. When they've been coloured and retouched, they'll be ready to be photographed to produce the finished film. The computer can also create visual effects no animator can. 
These pictures are part of a set used by animators for years to show how animals move. Look, actually, we need at least 24... Now, Stan Hayward and film producer John Hellis plan to adapt them for a computer. Uh, put five in between, between each, so that we get... We'd have 60 frames altogether, and we can see if that's too fast, or try to, another rhythm if you want. Yes, to. we can always take out some frames. A computer at Edinburgh University has made it possible not only to see how the horse moves, but to vary its speed. A computer's ability to experiment with movement has hardly been exploited up to now. This particular result from the Atlas Laboratory may look like an abominable snowman, but for animators, it could represent a giant step forward. Finally, a computer can be used to make images quite beyond the range of human experience. Small as this magnetic field around an electron, or huge as the cloud of stars in an expanding galaxy. When such techniques are used purely for their own sake, the computer can explore worlds which artists were unable to conceive before. Thank you.